Are you a serious dinosaur collector that wants to make better buying decisions? If so, this is the show for you. Welcome to episode 15 of the Dinosaur Review Show. And today we're going to be talking about Brontosaurus. Before we get started, George, what is the fossil record on the Brontosaurus? The fossil record for Brontosaurus is pretty good. It is a type of long neck diplodocid, and there are plenty of those in the Morrison Formation. Now, this is a species that is within your area of expertise. Yes, it is. And what makes you able to claim that this is in your expertise? Do you do extra training in this? Do you just seek these fossils out? What makes you? What makes this your specialty? For the past couple of years, I've been working on digging up fossils of diplodocids. So I say diplodocids because that's the name of the family. And it's not just one that we find. We find things like Diplodocus. It could be Brontosaurus or even Apatosaurus. They're all within that same cluster. I've worked on their neck bones, their tail bones, their rib bones. Every single bit of them, I think I've had a hand in helping uncover. And what area of the world did they live in? They lived in the western part of North America. They're part of the Morrison Formation, which is a rock formation that is about 150 million years old. And George, do we find all the diplodocids in the same area? We do. Some of them actually live together. Others were separated by different periods of time. Well, let's get started today, George. We have four different figures to look at. All right, let's take a look at the Mojo one. So this guy is your classic sauropod kind of figurine. When I say that is when we first found Brontosaurus, it was actually mistaken. They added the wrong skull from a different dinosaur called Camarasaurus, and then when they found out, oh, that's not the right skull, then they sculpted one in. And it wasn't until very recently, I would say in the last 50 years, where they were like, okay, it's actually closely related to uh, Diplodocus, so we're going to add that sort of slim skull, which is what we see here. It has that classic slim Diplodocid like skull. The neck is the biggest feature we're going to see on these dinosaurs. Brontosauruses didn't have the longest necks of any of the long neck dinosaurs in the family. What was long were their tails, which is nicely curved in this figure. Although it's very thick all the way through, their tails would taper off a lot more, be very, very thin towards the end. But I think this guy is a uh, a little too thick. Next, let's move on to the feet. So sauropods, their name means lizard foot. And sauropod is the descriptive word for all long necks. Looking at their front feet, you should see a half moon shape with their knuckles kind of going around in a semicircle. You can kind of see that here, but it's not a very well-defined shape like you see in sauropod footprints. But they do have the thumb claw sticking out, which is a very important feature that they might have used for the fence. I do like that gray color though. It's reminiscent of when we first started painting dinosaurs. It's a very good, very good color. Counter shading, correct? Counter shading, yep. You would see this in a lot of large animals. It just helps with temperature regulation and camouflage, but I don't think these guys needed much camouflage, which is probably why they decided to color this one a little gray. And cloaca, your favorite thing? <laughs> I am not cloaca fixated. Oh, maybe a little. Let's see. Um, there could be one there, but I'm not sure it is drawn out. Wait, could it be? Well, I'd say that is one right there. It's a thicker line than the rest, so yes. We'll give them credit for it. Yeah. All right, George, which one would you like to look at next? Let's take a look at the Schleich one. It's a lot bigger and longer. Now let's start from head to tail. It has that sort of uh, slumped head. It's not as slim as the other ones. You get a little bit of boxiness on the top. You know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of the Apatosaurus from Jurassic World. And this brontosaurus actually shows the nostrils a bit better than the past one. I didn't really see nostrils on the other one, but here you can see them on the side, which they would have had right between their eyes, which is kind of weird. Good thickness and length of the neck. Oh my, this one's really thick here. <laughs> Let's move on to the feet. Oh no, they don't have the half moon shaped in the front. So this half moon shape we find in footprints, which is how we're sure their feet would have looked that way when they're walking. This is more of a elephant kind of foot pad, which uh, sauropods did not have, but the back feet look accurate. They've got the claws uh, and the rounded foot. It just doesn't translate to the front. No cloaca. Um, I'm a little disappointed there. And the tail kind of gets rounded out at the, at the tip. It does taper a bit more, but there's no defined tip. It just rounds out. I do like its outstretched position though, because this is this is a good pose for optimum balance. George, let's take a look at the first figure from Collect A. All right, so this one is beautiful. I don't know what it is about a nice brown color, but it just looks so natural, you know? Let's start at the skull like we started with the other ones. This one is nice and sloped. It doesn't have too much of a boxiness in the back, and you can see 
a little bit of the nostrils. They're further down, which is, is okay because their nostrils go all the way up from the top of the snout to the top of their head. So placing the nostril slits is pretty... We don't know exactly where they go, if I'm being honest. It could be a difference of like a couple inches or centimeters. And this one does have a nice little rouge on the the face and the neck so you typically see that on male lizards and birds so I'm, I'm gonna call this one a guy and this guy has these osteoderm neural spines running along the back which they even go to the tail into three rows see we've got the middle one and the two side ones but before we go more into that let's go underneath and there it is there is a half moon shape front legs that is really nice and with the thumb claw very well done the feet the three claws in the back rounded back feet very nicely made and look at that we've got a cloaca all right moving down these osteoderms we can see the tail and it does come to a nice tip it is a little curved i kind of like that artistic license on curving the tail especially if it comes to a tip that looks amazing i, I really like this one couple questions on this figure george the spines along the back any evidence for those or that's purely artistic license it's mostly artistic license so every animal with a backbone has these spines in their backbones but determining whether they stuck out of the body is pretty hard to determine unless you have good preservation on the spines which <laughs> working on these guys they're pretty thin i'm talking like saltine thin and sometimes you don't get a good preservation of the tips of them but typically you could tell whether there was keratinous sheaths over them or whether they had skin over them if they had skin over them then you see the paths of the blood vessels if they had keratin over them then you see the scarring of the keratin attachments which I personally haven't seen, so I would say that they didn't really have these neural spines sticking out. And if they didn't have the single row along the back, they most certainly did not have the double row along the tail. They probably did not. And then another question concerning the osteoderms on the side. This is the first model we've seen those on. Any evidence to those? You know what? You got me there. I don't think we found osteoderms on brontosauruses, but we have found osteoderms on other sauropods like Shunosaurus, um, but this one is not very closely related to it. So I don't see why they put osteoderms on this one. That's a good point. And then one final question on this model before we move on is the foot pads. You would say that this is the most accurate foot structure you've seen on the three models so far. I would say so. It's got that half moon shape. It's clearly defined and the back feet as well. This, this is exactly how their footprints look. So I would say yes. Let's move on to the final figure from Collect A, George, and I have a surprise for you. A surprise? It's, it's dead. What? A dead dinosaur. Is, is this the first in, in our Happy Hen Toys videos? Well, then technically, I think all of them are dead. Um, but I'll be the judge of this one. I know a thing or two about dead dinosaurs, and my God, this one is dead. Uh, let's start with the head or what's left of it. it looks like a, a bite was taken out of, of the neck, but this is just like the previous one but with a little bit of extra bites taken out of it. Probably from an Allosaurus or a Saurophaganax or even a Torvosaurus. We don't know. Man, look, you can see the cervical vertebra. You can see ribs, limb bones. You can see the femur, <laughs> the caudals. The caudals are the tail bones, okay. which these dinosaurs had a lot of. It has the same kind of foot pad, but, you know... <laughs> This looks like a character from Family Guy who fell down with the arm bent backwards. <laughs> the feet are pretty consistent with the previous figure. I'm, I'm assuming they took from the same kind of mold. But what's really interesting is that the backbone is bent on this side. Well, the neck is outstretched in this post-mortem contraction, which happens to all dinosaurs when they die. Their neck ligaments and muscles start contracting pulling it upwards. The tail doesn't have the same loop-de-loop -loop that the other one does. It's just a singular curve, which I think is very, very graceful, very nice. Oh, are those guts in there? Or is that a heart? I don't know. I know more about dinosaur bones than dinosaur organs, but this is, this is really cool. Do you feel that the battle damage is realistic? I would say so. I mean, I haven't seen many bite marks on neck bones, but on limb bones, I have seen and back bones. Those are typically the areas that have a lot of tooth marks. The neck wound is consistent with a lot of predatory tactics. Cutting off the windpipe, it's also where a major artery runs. So if a dinosaur were to bite on this other dinosaur's neck bone, it would have air loss and blood loss. The bigger holes would not be possible while the animal would be alive. This is probably feeding. 
area, the smaller bites are consistent with uh, a chase. What kind of speed would the brontosaurus have? Could it realistically flee from an allosaurus or no chance? I would say no chance. Um, allosauruses were a lot more agile, more gracile than brontosauruses were. The biggest defense on a brontosaurus is their size. So this guy was either old or really young and could not get away from the allosaurus. We do find with the, again, I'm gonna bring up the footprints, sauropod footprints, always travel in groups. It's very rare for you to find a, singu a single sauropod walking along. So this one might have been one that strayed too far from the pack and got singled out and eaten. You said that their primary defense would be their size. Would they have a lot of tail strength that they could use that as a weapon as you often see in the movies? Oh yeah, the old tail whip. That is something that is just a theory. Although we do find evidence of their tails being fractured a lot uh, we don't know if that has to do with maybe the dinosaurs reproducing or maybe stepping on each other's tails or, you know, using it as a bullwhip. There is no chance for us to observe this happening, so we can't for sure say that it did happen. Mugshot time, George. All right, George, let's take a look at the faces side by side. Is there anything that's jumping out at you? Yeah, so the Schleich one is a bit boxier than the other ones. It looks like it has more of a a patasaurus like skull. The other ones have the more gray style or more delicate, smooth skull. So I would say that one is not like the rest. Let's take a look at the skin and texture. Which one is the most accurate? I would say the brontosaurus from Collect A is the most accurate, mostly because these are more well-defined scales. The Mojo one doesn't even have any scales. It's just wrinkled skin, much like you see in elephants. The Schleich one, these are very square-like scales. And as far as I've seen from sauropod scales, they're a bit more round, which we see in the Brontosaurus from Collect A. So even though the Collect A has the artistic spines, especially the double row on the back and the osteoderms, you would still lean towards that as having the most realistic overall skin texture? I would. Okay, George, let's take a look at the tails then. Well, I will say my favorite tails are the Collect A ones as well, mostly because they, they end on the tip, which these dinosaurs had very long, very thin tails at the end. They didn't have a really knobby tail towards at the end. So that's what you see with the Mojo and the Schleich. They kind of, it's almost like they cut off the tip of the tail. Decision time, George. Which one of these figures is the most scientifically accurate? I would say the Collect A one is the most scientifically accurate. The collect a carcass or the collect a live one? <laughs> well, if we're going that one, that route, the, probably the carcass. <laughs> That's closer to the truth I know. Again, the collect a one you, you're saying is the most scientifically accurate, even with the spines and the osteoderms. I'm Mostly willing good. to overlook that. <laughs> so accuracy aside, assuming money is no object, which one of these would you add to your collection? Both the Collect A ones. I would make a diorama out of it. I'd, I'd put probably an Allosaurus eating chunks off of it. And maybe the one that's not dead looking back at its fallen brethren. It's like, no. Well, there goes Carl. George has made a decision that the Collect A is the most scientifically accurate. And it is the ones that he would add to his collection. If you enjoyed this episode, please give us a thumbs up and a like. Thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next episode.